Hi everyone. Yay, I'm not in my car. Shock and awe. Um, <clears throat> I'm at home plugging away on some new stuff, which I'm very excited about. And I was having some interesting interactions and thoughts this morning. Last night I went to an amazing event put on by these two young ladies and it's called Living Atmem. And they got a collective of speakers together that were talking about love and their perspective about love. And it was amazing the wide variety of this perspective. And it made me really exciting to be sitting in a room of about close to 70 people and feeling their engagement about this topic and their excitement and their openness to hear about all of these perspectives. And it made me even more excited about hearing these perspectives because a lot of it is stuff that I've been talking to people for for a very long time or thinking or creating in my own little way and um, expressing. So it's really exciting to come across across this um, this openness that we're starting to create. And it gets me more and more and more excited about what we're going to be creating in the future. And um, it made me really want to start to really step up my game with everything. And then this morning, what was it that came across me? I don't know, this sort of annoyance of normal. And because it was, we got up in the morning, me and my husband, and it was this day-to-day -day schlog that started to encroach into our life again um, for my husband. He hates when I talk about him, but I'm going to anyways, because <laughs> that's what we talk about as people that are in our lives. And there was sort of a sadness as he got up to go to work and, and, and this overwhelming fear. And I got fucking annoyed, a really annoyed, because I'm so sick and tired of this, this concept of normal, this concept of, well, it's normal to go to work, and it's normal to pay the bills, and it's normal to do this, and it's, and I've always, since I was little, prescribed to the concept that normal is a setting on the dryer. And most people who I've come across who are normal are fucking boring. You're boring. You're so goddamn boring. It frustrates me because there's nothing creative about you. And that, or let me rephrase that. There's nothing creative that you're expressing about yourself because you're so busy hiding in the normal that it's painful for us all to live. And then I, so I drive home after dropping him off, incredibly frustrated at this normality concept. Um, have my cup of tea to start my day because I, I'm Celtic and every problem is solved with a cup of tea. And then I watched um, a really cool little program called The Eccentrics on um, Netflix. Now these are the people I love. And I got a little bit frustrated <laughs> again because we call them eccentric because they're just out fully expressing themselves, fully embodying who and what they are. And these people were making me cry, to be honest with you, because they were just so stunningly beautiful and so stunningly present in their life and living with such grace and pleasure, and they fought so hard to become that. And they keep fighting against this normal structure. And I thought to myself, and I started as, as I do because I'm a puzzle builder, I really started to recognize that that for me is love. That for me is such a profound expression of love, is this ability to create an actual life and to be eccentric and present and delicious and juicy and to be able to share your love and your passions unabashedly and unashamed. And the other thing that we keep forgetting is that 
when we actually step into being ourselves and when we actually share our creativeness, then it gives everybody else permission. The great thing about these people, and I, I count myself as one of them because I've always been on the fridge of weirdness, um, whether it was how I dressed, definitely how I speak and what I speak of, there's, there's this space of breath we create for others to not be normal anymore. And I am so fucking tired of normal. I am so tired of it. And for me, I compare it to, well, an artist. And I, um, I am both struggling, starving. I've played with the artist archetype. And I think finally at this point in my life, I understand the point of it. And the point for me is that our way through all of this, our way through this next phase of life and our way through pretty much anything is to embrace the artist, to embrace the creativity that is so innate in every single human being. That is what's going to make us safe. That is what's going to allow us to expand is by being creative, by birthing what is truly inside of us and what we truly want to experience and express and stopping squelching and stop lying to each other about the starving artist or that this is not important or this is not functional. It's really I like this analogy and I've said it several times. Is it not better to live a full life and create one amazing masterpiece, like one piece that speaks to the world than a whole shit ton of tchotchkes that you can find at the dollar store? And the problem for me or what I witness is the world puts value in the dollar store tchotchkes because I can count that I've made tens of thousands of this shit that goes in the garbage, that breaks down, that is not functional, that is not beautiful, that is not expansive, but it fills a void. That's okay for some reason in our society to go and buy stuff that I can throw away to say that I had more stuff to throw away than honoring somebody who decides to make their life a masterpiece, who takes the entire breath of their expansive co-creative life to create one, just one beautiful and amazing piece. We need to get over the tchotchke issue. We need to get over this concept of normal, the normal thing of getting up eight to five and nine to five or whatever the crap people do, plug in to plug out so that I don't have to be present, so I don't have to create something so I can be normal and hide. I really, really, really think we need to start embracing our creativity. And I really, really know that we need to do this as a collective. And what I learned and what I teach and what I express and what I live is that for me, love is moving it from a thought process into the body. And the way for me to do that is to create something, anything. Um, you know, it's whether it's movement, whether it's painting, whether it's speaking, whether it's sharing. This is all creative, amazing juiciness. And if we want to get past these freakouts and is it... Um, these attention tchotchke moments, we have to really, really dive in to learning and thinking correctly about, do I want a masterpiece or do I want a shit ton of tchotchkes? I hope it's a masterpiece. I really do because we don't need a land full, full of normal, of, you know, I look like everybody else. I'm not gonna, you know, stand out. Because what happens is you end up in the landfill. And I don't know about you, but I am not a garbage dump concept. 
Um, but people are really living this way. We are really living like a garbage dump concept because we won't let that creative moment really absorb into us. We won't let our eccentricities take over and expand us and we won't share these eccentricities so we can let others step into them. There were two beautiful men who have stepped up to being the representation of superheroes on the street because they got so frustrated at how the homeless were being treated. So their job from a little child was to be a superhero and it was their dream. So they created this delicious concept of a superhero and they embody it and they go out into the world and they affect it positively by being a superhero. Um, the other superhero gentleman, you know, he, he grew up in a rough neighborhood and it was really hard for him. And he doesn't want that to affect the children that are in his neighborhood. So he's a superhero saving these kids by talking with them, by interacting with them, by wearing a superhero costume. An amazing cat lady, thousands of cats she rescues. And she was a debutante and all that fancy money stuff. But her heart sung to save these animals because nobody else will because you're too busy being a tchotchke normal. I get really frustrated at this. A man living as Tarzan because he's so in touch with nature that he just wants to save it and represent it. These are the people that we should be aspiring to become. Not the Trumps, not the Kardashians, not that bullshit tchotchke stuff. And I can't think of a worse thing to be than a dollar store item. Look, I still shop at the dollar store. There's some fun stuff that I found in there. And I get it because it makes me happy. But I understand that what the importance of my life is, is a masterpiece. So when I can, and in every way I can, I purchase things that help me become a masterpiece and help others become a masterpiece. And that really inspire me to live and be better. It's so exhaustingly sad for me to see so many of us in so much pain and so many of us using, and I've done it myself too, I do it still and, and I watch my husband fight with it all the time and it fucking pisses me off to use the enslavement of money as an excuse not to become who and what we are. And it's gotta stop. And we can do it in every way we can until we no longer need that strain around our neck of money. Because what matters is the fact that you are here and you are a fucking masterpiece and you need to start expressing that way. And you gotta do it in every way you can so we can break this lie that you are just a tchotchke that's gonna end up in the dump. I don't want you to go there. I don't wanna go to the dump. Um, I want to leave pieces of amazement around. I want to leave a world that embraces and understands that the eccentric is the norm. I don't even want to hear that fucking word again. I hate the word normal. It's boring. It's unintelligent. It's, it's wrong on so many levels, this normal concept. And, and we keep festering this breeding concept of normal by forcing our children to go to schools that don't accept them, by going to jobs that are breaking us, by, by being okay with governments that are enslaving us and, and thinking that this is normal. This is not normal. This is, this is messed up by all rage. You should be living in a world that if you need to go to the doctor, you don't think twice, you just go. If you need to go to the dentist, you just go. If your heart is broken, you reach out to somebody who can help you. If you're fighting with someone, you, you have someone who can help you through this process. It, and this is all loving acts and I understand. I so understand and I see the vision so clearly that that's where we're going is towards this beautiful life of love. But right now, that's just a word. Um, there was this amazing woman last night, um, and I'm, her name is Jackie, and uh, she's from Cameroon. And 
in her talk, she talks about how they don't say the word, I love you. And I think that's beautiful. And one of my first teachers, Ntugu, was the same way. Um, he was so funny. I love him. Um, and, and he always talks about you fucking white people. <laughs> and I agree with him 100% as fucking white people. And I love us too because we've done a lot of amazing things. But the worst thing we've done is turn us all into tchotchkes. And when Jackie was talking about the fact that they don't use the word I love you, there is no word. It's because they express it in everything they do. They express it through dance. They express it through feeding. They, they, they are it. They embody it. And for me, that's a masterpiece. That's such a stunning way to live, to be there so encompassing for every single person within your community is a masterpiece. And for them, it's through song and through dance. And I so 100% just in the past few months, it's been something that I've been, I've been working through again, being a broken artist myself and working with a shit ton of broken artists. It's amazing how, um, what you are shows up on your doorstep so you can help yourself work through it through other people. And what's been showing up for me is a group of amazing women to work with and men that are hurting so profoundly because they can't touch their creativity, that they can't reach it because they're so terrified. It has been so wounded and so broken and so demonized that they have had to separate from it so profoundly that they're missing themselves. And that creativity needs to be embraced back into us so that we can integrate again, so we can bring ourselves back together whole, so we can understand that it's okay to be who I am because I am an eccentric, weird, awesome masterpiece. And the more I create, the more I become, the more I expand, the more space I create for others to expand and create in. It's not the lie we've been told that if you take up too much space, and this is something that's taught to women quite profoundly, is that don't take up too much space because you'll be taking up other people's space and you're not entitled to any space, so shut up. And I, I see this so much, and I've seen it in myself as well. Don't talk. Don't say anything. Don't step out. Don't show up. Don't be present. Don't shine. So many rhetoric has been taught to us. The opposite of this is true. The more you shine, the more you show up, the more you create, the more space you create for every single person on this planet. And that's profound. That's the masterpiece that we're all trying to create. And that is love. That is love. When we show up in our creative presence, then we are love. And then we embody what that beautiful community in Cameroon is about. And, and a lot of the primitive, another fucking word I hate, primitive um, cultures embody. They don't speak it, they are it. And we have a damn fucking problem in this um, side of the world about talking a load of crap. Again, we can look at a president and a prime minister right now who talk a shit ton of crap, but their actions show opposite of what they are. Or actually, let, let's say their actions show exactly what they are. And it ain't good. So why do we insist on keeping listening to the words? Well, because words are easy. Words are lazy, but words can also become incredibly powerful when you hold yourself to the integrity of your word. When you use your word to actually create an amazing and beautiful masterpiece of your life, then words have power. But until you understand that you are supposed to be a creative masterpiece, not a goddamn tchotchke that is owned by the government, or your boss, or your parents, or your lovers, or whatever you've decided owns you. Until you understand you're a masterpiece, then you're a tchotchke. 
and your words don't have the integrity that you need to be the eccentric fool. Fools are amazing. Um, in the tarot deck, the fool is the first one of the first cards, and the reason it is because it's the blank page that lets you know that your journey has begun, and from that journey, you create the rest of your story. And that, the fool is also the truth teller. The fool is the one that sits on the king's shoulder and points out where he's being a moron, um, where you are not being in alignment with your life. So to be a fool is a beautiful thing because you are always in alignment because you can shift and move quickly to create what you need and want. We are so rigid in our words and our thoughts that we have no flexibility to become love. And until we loosen up and step back into being creative masterpieces, we're stuck on it as a dollar store item. And that really breaks my heart to see so many of us as a dollar store item. I mean, I visually, I don't see us as that, but I see us acting as that. I see us stepping into our fear and I see us stepping into our, our wounds and our anger. And then we become that rigid dollar store item instead of going, I'm going to dive into this. I'm going to see what this is about and I'm going to create whatever color this is on my canvas, but it's not going to be what dictates who I am. And the more we can step into being creative, the more we can create and be what we really want to be. And honestly, that's what we we're here to do. So let me wrap this up because I think I'm wandering too far away from my original concept, which is I fucking hate normal. And you really should fucking hate normal too, because it's such a mediocre concept to be. So if you ever find yourself sliding into, well, I just want to be normal, I want you to walk into a dollar store and see how much normal is there, how much normal costs you, and if it's really worth it to be something that's going to end up in a dump in a couple of weeks later. Or would you rather go to an art gallery and see pieces that inspire create awe, and that will always be held in high regard. That's what I hope you want to be. I mean, hey, your life, and if normal is easy for you and normal is all you can get, rock it. But start to embrace some creativity in your life. I don't care how you do it. If it's dancing for 10 minutes a day, if it's grabbing a sketchbook, if it's writing something small and sweet, and I do mean actually writing because typing on your computer and typing on your phone um, allows you to disconnect from your creativity. You need to be able to physically move it into your body. And that's a step that we're missing and we, we really miss in as George and Agutu says in our fucking white people culture, we miss moving it into the body. We, we love this area because I can control it and it controls me and um, it allows me to stay normal and small and easily controlled. And so the powers that be love you staying up there. Why do you think IQ is the most important thing? Why do you think they test the shit out of children? because we want to beat it into you that what matters is your IQ. Yeah, it's good. I'm not gonna lie. I enjoy being an intelligent human being, but what I prefer to be is a loving, creative, expansive human being that understands that all of this small shit is just that. And I'm here to create masterpieces and I'm here to teach people how to create masterpieces. I am here to expand consciousness. I am here to help others expand their consciousness. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to fucking do this till the day I die. And my goal is to make sure that humanity gets free of this ridiculously enslavement that we have been living in for way too long. And if it takes me a thousand years, 
I'm bloody well going to be here to do that because there's no way, absolutely no way that I want my children to be raised in this shit. And I don't think we should allow our children to be raised in this shit. And I don't think we should be in this shit, okay? So get rid of normal. And if you start to slide into normal, understand you're a dollar store item when you're normal. Be a masterpiece. Go grab your pencils. Go grab your arts. Go sing. And I don't care if you don't sound good because what it is is you're getting yourself out into the world. You're expanding yourself. Go do it in a group. Go do it by yourself. But go get creative. Go start experimenting with your masterpiece. And it does take a lifetime to be a masterpiece. It really does. But that's way better than being an item that gets thrown in, in the dump. So I think that's a worn out topic for me now. Um, no, it's not. It's something I'm going to talk a lot about because for me, I think witnessing last night, watching people talk about love and expansion and their perspectives of it was stunningly beautiful. But for me, what really sunk in, especially after this morning, was that our only, I don't want to say only, one of the biggest ways to get to love is to put it in our body. All of our healing and all of our brokenness and all of our expansion can come from stepping in to being creative because then we can feel love. Then we can express love. Then we can share and show love. Instead of saying, I love you, I can create something loving for you. I can embody love through creating. And that is when we will shatter all of these stupid illusions. When we can create love, when we can be love, when we finally get to feel what we are, which is a masterpiece of love. That's going to be exciting. And that is going to happen because I'm going to be working my ass off like a mofo for it to happen. So take a breath because I'm going to. Take another one. Go create something beautiful. Go be your masterpiece. Go give people permission to be their eccentric masterpieces. And understand when you're slogging away in the fear of how do I pay for this? How do I do this? Why do I have to do this? That's the moment when you have to stop and go create something. You have to. You can't wait for the feeling of, now it's time to create. Because as a dying artist, I bought into that lie too. I bought into that. I gotta wait for the feeling to come. I've gotta wait for the feeling to come. And that's true to a point. But my muscle of art artistry is so weak that I've gotta find ways to start building it up so that it can flow very quickly. And that's something I've been working quite profoundly on in the past three to four months or since I got back from Hawaii is really strengthening my creative muscle in every way I can. And it's awesome now because it's flowing. And yeah, there's moments where it has hiccups and I go, Ugh, and that's okay because I know I can get through it because that muscle is so integral for me to feel love, for me to be love is through the creative process. And that's there for all of us because that's what moves it into the body. And that is where love sits, is in the body. It sits all around. And yes, we can go into some mumby bumbu fairy stuff. And I love that shit, so don't worry about it. But for the rest of the world who is still living as a tchotchke, you need to take the time to finally embrace some creativity. And I want you to understand that when we're sending our kids to, kids to school, this is being ripped away from them so fast and so profoundly that it scares the crap out of me. Because if it wasn't for arts, and if it wasn't for anything creative in my life, I would not have thought that this life was worth showing up for. It was arts that made me survive my childhood. It was arts that made me survive high school, and that was a 
fucking horrible time. It was arts who made me survive a broken heart. It was arts that helped me survive my mother's death. Um, and it's art that helps me get through and help others. And the fact that the first thing that the governments do when they run, they run out of money um, is cut the art programs should show you so deeply how important being creative is. Because what do we always leave behind any ancient culture? It's the arts. What's the thing that tells our story? Art. So when you deny yourself your creativity, you're denying yourself. And when you take that away from children and we run around going, gee, why are they so depressed? Why are they so anxiety ridden? La 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 la. Because they can't touch themselves. And if you can't feel or touch yourself, what are you? That's a good question to think about. So we're systematically destroying ourselves by removing the arts and by making it something the elite can have. Art is for everyone. Art is supposed to just be what flourishes. And, and when I talk about the arts, I'm talking about growing your flower garden because that's an art. Um, and, you know, walking through the world and seeing something of great beauty, that's expressing art. But really now it's time to dance, to sing, to get together in groups and create masterpieces together, to paint, to knit, to sew, whatever your passion is. And if you don't have one, then it's time for you to experiment and find one or find many, expand, create, you know, it's just about getting in touch with who we are. And that's love. And that's amazing. And that's a masterpiece. And that's how we're going to survive this next phase of the words I get is collateral damage, so I'll go with that if that source is what wants it to use. I'll go with collateral damage. To get through it, we need to get creative. And we need to be able to understand that that is the joy and that is the amazing part of being human, is the creativeness. And to share that creativity and to share it openly and to share it with everyone and to just stop Hoarding it. Stop collecting your dollar store item. Because you're not something that should be thrown away after a couple of weeks. Because it's not well made enough to matter. So, lots of love. And joy and creativity and amazement. And please start walking towards the eccentric artist. Please start singing your eccentricity. You know, just start doing something that lets you express what and who you are. Because it's amazing. Because the more of 